Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now I like to keep a pretty close eye on the Steam hardware survey. This is Steam's own hardware survey that tells you basically which sort of PC components people are using. For example, graphics cards, CPU speed, RAM amount, resolution, things like that. Now of course to me the graphics card that people choose is the most interesting topic and so today I thought we'd take a look at four of the most popular graphics cards according to the Steam hardware survey and see just how well they're all holding up as we approach the end of 2019. So I've chosen two from Nvidia and two from AMD. Now the two most popular Nvidia cards are the 1060 and the 1050 Ti. Now there's nothing specific about the amount of VRAM, but I've gone with the six gig 1060 for testing. And of course the 1050 Ti is a four gig card. For the AMD cards, which admittedly are a little bit further down in the list of popularity, we have the RX 580 and the RX 570. And while the percentages for these AMD cards aren't exactly huge, they are the most popular out of the others listed. Now, of course, Steam doesn't conduct the hardware survey on everyone. This is just a small percentage of all of you PC gamers out there. So for the AMD cards, we have the 8 gig 580 and the 4 gig 570. I chose the 4 gig 570 to test because that's the card I have on hand and I wanted to mix it up a bit rather than use two 8 gig cards from the AMD side I thought we'd throw a 4 gig one in too. So let's get into it and see how well all of these cards hold up as we approach the start of 2020. So as per usual we have the AMD Ryzen 5 3600 paired with 16 gigs of 3200 megahertz RAM. Now I chose a certain setting throughout all of today's games and stuck with it. For example, I chose high in our first game, Red Dead Redemption 2. And in the other games, I tested the same settings with each and every card. The gameplay you see on screen isn't representative of any of the cards in particular. It's just there for some nice background footage whilst I put these figures up on the screen. So starting with Red Dead Redemption 2, and you can see that the RX 580 still did very well at 1080p high, 52 frames per second on average, followed by the 570 with 42, then the 1060 with 40, and then the 1050 Ti with 25 FPS. Though having said that, turning things down to medium, with the 1050 Ti would grant you around 34 frames per second, thus pushing you over the line of what I would consider playable on this lower end card. If you want closer to 60 frames per second, well you're probably going to have to turn the settings way down and drop the resolution. That was to be expected in a way, Red Dead Redemption 2 is very demanding. In most cases though, you will find that the 1050 Ti is still capable of running games with medium or high settings fairly well. For example, take The Outer Worlds here, a game that seems to favour Nvidia cards over AMD's offerings anyway. With the 1060, we were seeing around 80 frames per second, with a 1% low of 58. This was followed by the RX 588 gig with 69, then the RX 570 with 58, and the 1050 Ti bringing up the rear here with 52 frames per second on average. This was also a pretty decent result, to be honest, and the gameplay felt quite smooth. Now, you can bump things up to Ultra if you wish, but this may have a detrimental effect on the frame rate of both the 1050 and RX 570. I found high was quite a nice sweet spot to play with on all of the cards today. And to be honest, the Outer Worlds will favour NVIDIA cards over AMDs. Still, all four of these, Steam's most popular graphics cards at present for both NVIDIA and AMD, are doing quite well. Now, Metro Exodus was released in the first half of the year, but it is notorious for its demanding system requirements, not necessarily on paper, but when you come to actually play the game well, you can expect some pretty severe stutters here and there on quite a few pieces of hardware. Now the RX 580 came out on top with 54 and a 1% low of 30. The 1060 followed just below that with 50 frames per second, then the RX 570, and then the 1050 Ti. This was with the normal settings during the benchmark run. Now the 1050 Ti will give you a fairly low 1% figure there, and 
you can expect to see a few stutters but this can probably be alleviated by using 1080p low as we move into 2020 next year i think we're going to see the 1050 ti start to struggle more and more but for lower settings it's still a pretty decent card though if you're purchasing one new it doesn't make too much sense as opposed to something like a 1650 super which will do quite a bit better and not cost that much more the used market though well that's a whole nother story but I'll get into that in more depth at the end. Now we'll move on to a couple of games that released last year but have received constant performance updates. The first of which is Battlefield 5 at 1080p Ultra with DirectX 12. We were seeing 79 frames per second with the RX 580, 73 with the 1060, 67 with the RX 570, and then 48 with the 1050 Ti. At Ultra settings here, the game looked very nice indeed. The 1% lows were also fairly respectable, and I didn't really have any problems across the board with Battlefield 5 here at full HD resolution. Now, I imagine the 1060 will still be the Steam Hardware Survey's most popular card as we move into next year, at least for the first half of the year. That's just a guess. <laughs> I'm probably completely wrong, but I can't completely explain the reasoning for this. I think it was because when it came out, it was such a good choice. You know, it came in 3 gig and 6 gig variants. And for all we know, the 1060 here on the hardware survey could be the 3 gig version. That might be the card that most people went for, but the 1066 gig would be the more sensible used option in late 2019, as it can still hold its own pretty well. You may run into a few VRAM limitations with the 3 gig card which some would argue shouldn't be called a 1060 at all and that's going to become more noticeable in the very near future. Now this video wasn't intended to prove anything, the cards shouldn't really be directly compared because they do appeal to different markets. I was just curious to see how well these popular GPUs were holding up. Now Kingdom Come Deliverance is another game released last year but it has received constant updates once again the 580 came out on top with 58 frames per second not quite 60 here the 1060 followed shortly behind it with 56 the 570 next with 54 and the 1050 ti with 33 you can see that once again the 1050 ti would benefit from some lower graphical settings though i'm sure we'll be looking at each of these cards more in depth next year to see just how well they're holding up individually now as i mentioned briefly earlier all of these cards probably aren't the wisest investments when it comes to buying them new in a way they've sort of all been replaced for example you have the 1650 which replaces the 1050 ti the 1650 super which makes a decent replacement for the 1060 and the RX 5500 XT AMD's very new card which replaces the 570 and the 580 though I'm yet to review that card though I hope to do so very very soon. All of these cards make the best sense when purchasing them on the used market and the 580, 1060 and 570 are still fairly capable if you don't mind slightly reduced settings. I also stand by the statement that the 1050 Ti may start to struggle a little more as we move into 2020 and you'll probably just have to turn a few more settings down as we start to see newer and more demanding games appear on the market but it totally depends on what comes out and I'll be sure to make another 1050 retrospective video toward the end of next year as well as it will be very interesting, I'm sure, to see how well it's coping. With all that said and done, well, I hope you've enjoyed this look at a few of the still popular cards, according to the Steam Hardware Survey. I apologise for my upload schedule recently. I've probably mentioned it a dozen times, but I'm moving house this week. I wanted to squeeze a video in here, as it's been a few days now. If you enjoyed it, leave a like on it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know if you still use any of these cards that I've tested today. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one.